Hi all, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we are looking at the Blood Angels and the aftermath of the devastation of Baal. Spoiler warning to begin with, the events we are covering today are from the novel The Devastation of Baal and I really recommend you read the novel for yourself first, as not only do you get the most enjoyment out of it for yourself this way, but we also help to support the Great Games Workshop and Black Library. And as I've said several times before, this novel is absolutely awesome. Really one of my favourites, so do yourself a favour and go read it for yourself first. This video is in the aftermath of the Blood Angels and the successor chapters narrow victory against the Tyranid Hive Fleet Leviathan and continues on from my previous upload, Gabriel Seth warning to Dante. And if you haven't watched that upload, then go check that out. And you may also want to go back and watch two previous uploads if you've never seen them, Dante's Final Stand and Dante Meets Sanguinius to get an idea of what Dante went through during the battle. And yes, I know, I do call Baal Baal in one of those earlier vids. Okay, look, blame too much Diablo 2 when I was younger. But assuming you've done that, let's just jump straight in. A single sanguinary guard stood watch over the gathering of his masters. Correus, he was called. He was the last of his kind, and therefore would soon be made exalted herald of Sanguinius. New guard would be selected. Dante had a plethora of heroes to choose from now, but for the moment, Correus completed his duty alone. So it was throughout the chapter. Already steps are being taken to set things to rights, said Adancio. The Primarch has brought with him vast resources for peace as well as war. He gestured down at the scaffolding covering the lower levels, which was creeping closer to the twin summits by the minute. Adonisio was more enthusiastic than his peers. In Gilliman, the diligent master of Logisticium had found a kindred spirit. The Arx Angelicum will be a very different place, said Dante. It has never endured such a devastating attack. It will never be the same again. Our bonds with our Primarch are frayed a little further by the loss of so much history, said Carlayan. Aye, said Sendini, but his brother walks among us. That is a fair trade. He is not the great angel, said Corbulo. He is with us nevertheless, said Carlayan. Dante listened to the quiet talk of his brothers. So many had died. As yet, firm casualty numbers were unavailable, but Dante did not expect the total survivors of the Blood Angels to exceed 300. Barely 300 Blood Angels remaining, and only one surviving Sanguinary Guard lived to tell the tale. I'm not sure how I feel about this. On the one hand, it goes to show how devastating the Tyranid Hive Fleet was, how much force it threw at Baal to try and eradicate them how much the Blood Angels and co had to fight against and go through to achieve victory. Then on the other hand, there is a part of me that is very much, oh, okay, it's all about the Primaris Marines from now on. I understand obviously what they're going on for here. I understand the future path we are on. Others of the Blood had fared far worse. Eight chapters had been entirely wiped out. Half a dozen nearly so to the point where they would never recover. Most of the others could boast no more than a company or two of warriors, and none remained at above half strength. Hundreds of war machines, dozens of ships, thousands of warriors, all gone. If the hive mind had truly intended to wipe out Sanguinius's line, it failed by the narrowest of margins, said Dante. But we have won, repeated Corbulo. He of all of them was the most optimistic for the future. The fortress monastery played host to the new breed of space marine. There were thousands of them, wearing Sanguinius's colours alone. Formations of them moved in the desert, replacing the warriors Dante had lost in his defence of Baal. Their strange ships soared through the skies, their tanks growled over the sands on anti-grav fields. As novel as they were, these machines would remain unfamiliar only a short time. 
perhaps this scouring clean of the Arx Angelicum is for the best, said Borgio. A new fortress monastery for a new chapter. The old days are over. The days of the new space marines are done. The Primaris hold the key to a man's survival in this terrible age. A new era is dawning. One our Primarch father would not recognise. Again here, we have the reinforcement of change. Not just for us the readers, but for Dante as well. The chapter master of the Blood Angels, a legend of the Imperium, and he doesn't recognise half the troops and machines under his command. The galaxy is in great peril, said Dante. He looked heavenward. During the day, the Cicatrix Melodictum painted a writhing band across the sky. At night, it dominated everything. The warp storms were over, but the northern half of the galaxy was denied the light of the Astronomicon. Half of the Imperium is at risk of destruction, and on the other side of the rift is in little better shape. Imperium Nihilus, said Astaroth. What horrors await us there? The Indomitus Crusaders fought all manner of foes. Many of our worlds have fallen. Carleon and the rest had done their best to bring Dante up to date on all that had happened in the wider Imperium. Since Cryptus fell, less than six months had passed on Dante's subjective point of view. Beyond Baal, 70 years had gone by. Time had been bent out of shape by the opening of the Great Rift. A very interesting point to keep in mind now, the Blood Angels no longer have access to the Astronomicon on their side of the Imperium. Any warp travel they now partake in is vastly more difficult and more dangerous than ever before. Dante folded his arms. The artisans had done a good job restoring his armour. Burnished gold gleamed again. The damage to Sanguinius's mask was repaired. More than ever, he felt like a fraud, a pretender to the Primarch's glory. Now he had met one. Now he had met one. The fault was still wondrous. He was a relic. Like Seth, a golden statue from a doomed age. Maybe the Imperium was finished. Primarch or not. If it survived, it would have to change. Everything was in flux. For 1,500 years, Dante had seen the Imperium locked in a stasis of its own making. In a handful of days, the certainty of millennia had been swept aside. Gilliman promised reform. Old as he was, weary as he was, Dante was glad he had lived to see this day. He would serve. Sanguinius himself had commanded it, and so it would be done. Dante vowed never to share that vision with anyone, not even Rebute Gilliman. Whether it were real in any objective sense was not important. In every sense, it was true. The certainty of service calmed his troubled thoughts, but one thing nagged at him. Sanguinius's prophecy had not been disproved after all. The golden warrior would still be needed to stand at the Emperor's side in the final days. Perhaps he had a vital part yet to play. Peace had come to Baal for a time. War racked the heavens. He hoped the prophesied days would not come to pass. He prayed that Sanguinius was wrong. If that time when he stood at the Emperor's side were to come, it was not yet. Clatters of industry sounded across the desert again. The fleets of the Imperium crowded Baal's orbits. Hundreds of thousands of warriors walked its sands. His place was there for the foreseeable future. So the sons of Sanguinius will rebuild. Dante knows the galaxy, the Imperium needs them. But to be able to have a chance of saving the Imperium, he must first craft a fighting force fit to be called the sons of Sanguinius. Now there's a good conversation here between Gilliman and Dante, but I will cover that in the next upload to stay focused on the Blood Angels as a whole. 14 weeks later, the Indomitus Crusade pulled away from the Baal system. Behind it, 
left the skeleton of new orbitals and shipyards over the prime world, and multiple ships of Mechanicus fleets attending to their construction. Dante waited for every engine stack to burn bright on the ships before sending the order to his own fleet to open fire on Baal Primus. Blood Cooler symbolically loosed its torpedoes first. The day was clear. Baal Primus was large in the sky. Dante could track each flaring cyclonic torpedo as it fell towards the dead moon. The assembled fleets of the blood were a shadow of their former selves, but mighty enough to kill a world nevertheless. Robute Gilliman went to a fiery salute. Rings of flame burst on Baal Primus's airless planes, gone as soon as they were made, but potent enough to render Kabanda's mon monument to bone dust. Macro cannons joined the demolition and lances until all the force of the Space Marine's war fleet was employed in erasing the demon's name. Gilliman's ships rapidly receded into twinkling lights, leaving Dante an insurmountable task. Dante looked down. Chapters in liveries old and new looked back. My Lord Walden, said Adancio, kneeling and offering up the Axe Mortalis to Dante. The chapters of the blood await your command. Dante took the heft of his weapon in silence. Slowly he raised it over his head. For Sanguinius and the Emperor, he roared. For Sanguinius, for the Emperor, tens of thousands of Primaris space marines roared back. And there we have it. The Lord Commander of Imperium Nihilus with a legion at his command. Are these all sons of Sanguinius? It doesn't explicitly state. If that's the case, then we have a literal Blood Angels Legion walking the stars once more. Yes, they are broken into chapters, but the Blood Angel successors all followed Dante during the devastation of Baal already. And now he is the commander of half the Imperium. Sanguinius himself never commanded such a force. It's an interesting turn of events from Gilliman, who instituted the Codex Astartes, breaking down the legions to chapters. Now returned to see the state of affairs, seems to be very much trying to bring back the legions of old, if in force, not name. I firmly believe his brothers such as the Lion and Dawn will very much command their sons as a legion, should they return anyway, regardless of chapters. The Imperium needs the legions to save it from destruction. And Gilliman, he's already kind of doing just that. And how about the Blood Angels' opinions on the new Primaris Marines? They look upon them very favourably as the salvation of the Imperium. Obviously we know the Flesh Terrors have a slightly different opinion thanks to Seth in the previous upload that we saw. But for Dante, he's very much in favour of these new warriors. But then again, perhaps due to the low numbers of remaining warriors, their positive viewpoint of them is completely understandable. Why weren't the Blood Angels at Vigilus? Well, perhaps this is really the answer we've been looking for the whole time. They were busy on Baal rebuilding, preparing their new forces. And of course, there's a good chance with the lack of the Astronomicon in the Northern Imperium that they were simply not aware of the true plight of Vigilus until it was too late. If they could even get there properly at all with the struggles of the warp travel. But there is no doubt, Dante and the chapters of the blood are retooled and reinforced, about to unleash on the foes of the Imperium Nihilus, and I can't wait to start reading some of the action. And with all the rumours of new Primaris character models inbound, by Sanguinius, they're better be some new Blood Angel Primaris upgrades coming. There are a few in the entire range that need an update as much as Mephiston and co. And don't we all want to see an awesome new Dante model? Come on, I've said it before, but make it happen, Games Workshop. But what do you guys think? Are you in favour of the Blood Angel's opinion on the new Primaris Marines? Does it make sense to you? What do you think 
Sanguinius would think of him should he return. What do you think the Blood Angels will do now? Where should they strike first? And was Dante the right choice, right choice to be the lord of the new northern half of the Imperium? As always, drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's get a bit of discussion going. A huge thank you to all of my subscribers as always. Your support really means a lot to me. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel continue to grow. And if you've enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off and I'll see you guys again real soon.